phone number, and your name. We'll put it on a piece of paper, fill it out, and then what I'll do is I'll email you a PayPal account, and you just pay through PayPal. You do it on your credit card later on. It could be a week from now, it could be two weeks from now. All right? Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, I'm going to take the DVDs, and I ain't going to pay him. Mean, he's in Chicago, right? Um, you didn't catch my last name, did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I grew up in an Italian community right in Chicago. Collecting money is not a problem in our, in our business. Right? We collect money real well. We've got people here in Vancouver, too, so don't worry about that. But seriously, if you want them, let me know, and I'll see you afterwards. Um, welcome. Yes. Uh, no questions while I'm talking. Oh, I just want to know no. your, your DVDs are different from I'm say, eight years ago. Uh, no, that's the beauty of it. Is because what, when you watch them and you buy them again and you watch them again, you get more information. Because you forgot all the other stuff. <laughs> I know you did. Well, but those probably burned out. And they're awesome DVDs. Uh, there's a good testimonial. That's the best one right there. And they're awesome DVDs. <laughs> no, it's, no um, they're new. But here's the, here's the catch. If you buy the set, you will get a six DVD. Tomorrow you'll see a bunch of drills, videos of fielding, hitting. Those are my new ones. I'll throw those in as a six DVD, so you'll have a new set. And if you have my set already, you can buy the six DVD for thirty dollars. Okay. Any questions? No more. All right. Listen, um, I really appreciate. We all do. We're in the business of obviously talking to coaches. The issues that you go through with your young kids, I know we got 12 and under here. I started Mickey Owen Baseball School 25 years ago. I had Charlie Sheen as one of my students. Um, you know who Charlie Sheen is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't teach him anything off the field. Okay, everything, I taught him all the baseball stuff, but nothing off the field stuff. That wasn't me. <laughs> but in those days, I had the 12 year olds, the six year olds, the eight year olds, the five year olds. And they came for two weeks, and after those two weeks, they were gone. We didn't know who they were. They came two weeks, came to the school. They paid a lot of money at Mickey Owen. This was, again, 25 years ago, like 500 bucks to be there. And we had to teach them in that short period of time without knowing anything about them. So I've been with you, Ben, where you had 12 kids that are about this tall that have no idea what life's about, have no clue, right? They're walking around with their looking up and they're looking at butterflies and, and all that. And I used to think, man, how am I going to keep these kids' attention? You know, I mean, I got 12 of them. And then I didn't have five coaches, so I don't think I had five coaches. I didn't have five or 20 or 10 batting, batting tees. I didn't have batting cages and all that stuff. I just had basically what you may have, a few, some baseballs, maybe one or two tees, catcher's equipment, some bats, some balls, and boy, we had to go and, and, and train these kids. The difference was parents were paying us to do what? To do that, okay? So when they're paying you, if you think parents are tough now, Wait till they, when they're paying you money, that's even harder because they expect results 100%, right? They want their money's worth. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we've been there. We've been with those young kids. We understand what you're going through. Now, you have a much tougher job than all of us do, all the speakers. Why? You're volunteers. Anybody get paid here? Raise your hand. You don't get paid? Why are you doing it? <laughs> right? You're doing it because what? You love the game. You love what you do. You love working with young kids. If you, if you don't love working with young kids and you don't love going to practice, guys and gals, don't do it. I know, I know they're looking for volunteers all the time, but we don't need volunteers that don't have a passion for what they do. We want volunteers. When they get to the field, your, your motivation is, I love this. I love what I'm doing. And whatever happened at work, whatever happened at home, whatever happened anywhere, and, and, I, and I have to work at it too. That's out the window. That's gone. Okay? You can't be thinking about, even if you got fired, you got to show up that day to that practice with enthusiasm. Why? Because those kids are excited, aren't they? Don't they come, I mean, they come with, you know, the black eye stuff here to practice, right? The brand new batting gloves, the $500 bats that cost $25 in China. Um, you know, they, they got all this nice stuff and they show up and they're pumped up, right? And all that, what they don't need some grumpy person there, you know, pissed off because he's mad at life or mad at something because that, that takes away their energy. It sucks all their energy away of what they're trying to do, right? Now, what, how, I'm going to ask the question. This is going to be more conversation, not a lecture, not a speech. How do you motivate and how do you keep the attention of 12 kids at 10 years old? How do you do that? Anybody? Raise your hand. Somebody tell me. Give me an idea. Short little things. Okay, short like what? Uh, little drills, games. Okay, so fun. drills, games. Okay, and having fun's great. But, but listen, 
Don't use, don't keep, what I don't want you to do is keep saying, let's have fun, okay? It's a good idea, but make sure you're doing it. And make sure you have the right things to do. Because a lot of guys come to me all the time and say, oh yeah, we gotta have fun in practice, great. Then I go to practice, I look at it, I wonder, that's fun? <laughs> Suggestion, here we go, question. First thing you do when you get to practice with your 12 year olds, 10 year olds, what do you do? First very thing, what do you do? Knuckle bench. Knuckle bench? Yeah. Where'd you get that at? TV? TV yeah. Okay, Science. good. I like that. Knuckle bench. What else you do? What else? They showed up. Here they are. They're hungry, right? They got bats, balls. They got, they're ready to rock and roll. What do you do? What's the first thing? What do you do? Warm-ups. Warm-ups. Okay. Come here. Come here. Is there, show me one more. I just need one warm-up you do. Just one. Go ahead. Just one. Just do the games run. Okay, good. Do laps. Play. Do laps. Sit down. Thank you. Hey, you did a good job. <laughs> uh, here. I don't even know if I, had, if I brought it one day. Good job. Okay. Little incentive, no? Pretty cool, huh? He's looking for, you know, Griffey, Bonds, you know, all those big guys. They, I take those and keep them for myself, okay? <laughs> I give him a shitty card. Uh, uh, so, why, well, baseball cards are a great incentive. Now, the first thing he said, and, 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 and understand, we're, gonna, we're not being, we're critiquing each other, okay? I make mistakes, made a ton. So don't think that I'm better than you are, and, and that I don't make any mistakes, I know it all, not true at all. But I have an open mind, okay, compared to most coaches. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. Running. I got an hour and a half of practice, right, average. Okay, in the United States, the average practice per day, okay, is one hour and a half, roughly. You know how many practices for an in-house league before the season begins? How many practices, sir, you got before the season begins? Come on, be honest. Come on. Wait, we got 100? Well, your kids. Your team. Okay, give me the little guys. Give me the little guys. The little guys, how many okay. practices a week? Before the season starts. Before the season starts? Well, I guess it uh, depends when, but I guess it's like two a week. I guess it's really two out of six, seven practices. Six, seven practices, right? Six, seven. And you got four? Four? Before the season begins. How many you got? Four would be nice. Okay. Be yeah, right, exactly. You love to have 20, right? You love that, like college coaches, high school, you love that 20. How many do you have? always arranged to maybe one or two. <laughs> there you go. Now, but this is what we need to talk about. I've only got the average, na and I'm going to give you the U.S., the average national practice per that time before the season begins is six to seven practices in the U.S. Midwest. Obviously, California, you're going to increase that. But by the time you're done with the average, about eight or ten. Now, unless you have a travel program, you know, you're practicing 30, 40 times, you're practicing in the winter, you got indoor cages and all that. We don't, we don't all have that here. Okay, so we have six practices. So I gotta figure out six practices, how am I gonna keep the attention? How am I gonna work on the proper fundamentals? And how am I gonna get them to get better in six practices? Let me give you a secret, you're not, okay? You're not gonna make them better in six practices. I don't care who you are. You're gonna make them, you're gonna start them on the right track, but you're not. If a pitcher's not throwing strikes right away in six practices, I can, look, I do it for a living. I can't get a guy to throw strikes competitively. I can get him in bullpens to throw strikes, then put him on the mound and get him to throw strikes. That takes a lot longer. So the number one thing we have to recognize is that we've got to have patience and we need somebody else's help. All right, now we got an hour and a half of practice. We got all the, think about all the skills that you have to teach. Just, you know them all. Hitting, fielding, throwing, bunting, all that stuff, individual positions. You know, and at the same time, keep their attention. You got so many things to teach, and you got to keep them safe at the same time. So, if I'm going to do running, which is a good thing before we start, would I run around the field? My number one question would be, is it fun? Is it fun? Okay, when, when you run, let's say you run with your guys around the field, or with the team, you say, take two laps, guys, right? And then what do you don't normally do? Go sit on a bench, yeah. right? If it was so much fun, you'd be running with them. Right? But if it was so much fun, you'd be running with them. Well, it's not fun. Okay? And yes, it does get the body loose, but I only got an hour and a half. So why am I running, why am I running the bases? If I'm going to jog, why don't I jog around the bases? Why don't I throw baseballs, yeah. four lines or three lines, maybe three coaches, two or whatever it is, you can be imaginative how you run your practice, a few lines, and the kid gives you the ball, any ball, and he runs and throws it. You know, you throw it to him, and he catches it on the run. And does it matter that he catches it? Absolutely not. You're not, you're not working on catching. What are you working on? You're warming them up. But at the same time, you're having, they're having what? Now let's bring the magic word in. They're having fun because I love to run and catch, but I don't like running around the field. 
That's boring. <laughs> see, see my point here? Now, it sounds real simple. He says, well, that's simple. That's basic. Yeah, but it's important. Now, so, but guess what happens? If you do that a bunch of times for five minutes, some will catch it, some won't. You'll realize some need, you don't need to throw it real high yet because they're not ready for it. So just throw it nice and easy. If you got so, what kind of baseball should you have when you first start your first practice? Something soft. You're gonna use this, first practice, okay? Kid gets a ground ball, gets in the head. Guess what, you know, and then you look right, come on, Jimmy, you're all right. Oh, you are? Yeah, let me hit you in the head, see if you'll be all right with this, right? And then, then you'll go, ah, oh, you having fun? Sure, you're having a blast. Got hit with the ball in the forehead. That's a great time. Can't wait to do this tomorrow. What are they gonna do? They're gonna find a different sport. Because yeah. they just got hurt, right? They ran the field, and don't get, don't, I'm not getting on yet, because I know these guys do the same thing. I did it. I know there's other guys in here saying, oh, geez, I do that too. Hopefully, I'll change that next practice when we start. But what happens is, they're going to change sports. What sport are they going to go to? Soccer. Uh, what is it? Soccer. Yeah, soccer, right? Soccer's a communist game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know what you're thinking. You know, you got, I, know, I play soccer. I play soccer in Europe, so I don't, don't feel like I, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just trying to keep you interested here a little bit. But soccer, they play. Why? And I don't blame them. That's what I would do. If I came to practice and I had a coach that had a frown on his face and he showed up and he wasn't organized, and then he was, here's the best part. We go to the young kids and said, what do you want to do? Hey, can I be with something? I need to see it. I need to sneak it in here. Um, if you ask kids, what do you want to do today? A lot of times I'll ask, what do you want to do? What are they going to say? Hit, right? No one's going to say, uh, oh, I'd love to take some ground balls, especially the way you hit them as hard as you can. Right? <laughs> that, that's so much fun. You know, they're blasting them at me. Because sometimes we have the philosophy, hit the ball as hard as you can. If you hit it as hard as you can, you can get that one, then the other ones will be easy. But we've got to start off somewhere, right? So now you tell them, okay, we're going to hit. Here's your hitting guy. Most, and I'm telling the U.S. guys, if you're one of these coaches, you just need to open up and rethink what you're doing. That's all. It's not a criticism. Here I am, and this still happens in the U.S., supposedly the best country, that's where I'm from, the best country in baseball. Not true anymore, okay? You go to Japan, you'll see. You Japanese? Absolutely, I can talk to Michiwa. Don't worry about it. Chinese? Yeah. All right, I don't, that, Shay -shay. I got Shay Shay. What? You know as much Chinese as me. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here I am. I'm going to... Pitch, right? And here comes coach, says, let's hit. He takes one kid, puts him up there. No? Puts one coach, hey, don't play. Where do the other guys go? Out the field. He gets a bag of balls. Doesn't this happen? He gets a bag of balls, and they're hard balls, because he didn't have the softer ones. And he says, okay, ready? Here we go. And the first thing in his mind, he's thinking, maybe the first kid up, get this part, maybe the first kid up is a kid he doesn't like. You know? So now he's thinking about striking him out. Right? That's because I'm going to teach him a lesson. He never listens to me, so I'm going to strike his butt out. <laughs> What's the kid thinking? I'll tell you what the kid's thinking. What's he thinking? Yeah. Hmm? What's he think? What's the kid thinking when he's up the bat? And the coach has got the ball in his hand. He's getting ready to pitch. You think the coach is going yeah. from the stretch? No. He's thinking of his days when he went from the windup, right? Then he can pitch. The kid's looking at the coach, and the coach isn't exactly in great shape. Okay? He's got a little bit of a belly. No? Most coaches are getting here, maybe not the younger guys, but some are getting here. And then he's thinking, he's going to throw. When's the last time he threw? <laughs> right? I think he threw like last summer. Okay, so now instantly, what? and then he looks at the ball and he says, that's a hard ball he's going to throw. And here you are. You're going to go into your major league windup, Sandy Koufax. No, here we go. Right? And the arms are going here, and the legs are going there, and all of a sudden he's going, oh shit. And, the ball. and the first, excuse my language, by the way, let me back up. I never, ever, ever, I swear my wife, unfortunately, my wife Beverly, once in a while, I swear in the house, she always has to correct me, ever, ever swear in the field. Ever. And if you do, apologize to him. We have a bad habit in the United States. A lot of our high school coaches who are educators also swear on the field. My question to them is, do you swear in class? If you swear in class, then swear in the field. You are, you're not allowed to swear in class as an educator. Then why are you doing it on the field? Okay, we're on school properties. We're teaching ed young kids. Never swear when you're there. If you do, just apologize. So here we are. Guy gets in his wind up. And guess where the first pitch goes? Over the kid's head, right? The kid's going, no way I'm staying in that batter's box. He steps <laughs> in the bucket, right? Well, of course he's going to step in the bucket. So what do we got to do? We got to go to a softer baseball. We got to go to one knee like Coach Doyle, or I think said earlier, go to one knee, right, to their level. 
We got to get wiffle balls, and we got to throw wiffle balls, and we got to throw at a short distance. We got to shorten the distance instead of 46 feet, 30 feet on one knee. And I know what you're thinking. It's not baseball. Yes, it is. Hitting is a game of reaction. At make, how did you come up with 46 feet? How did you come up with? How did Major League Baseball come up with 60 feet six inches? Because of the size of the field they had, right? The pitching mound was close to the middle. I mean, there's no, there's no reality of what it has to be. It's just a matter of hand-eye coordination with young kids. All right. So now, you need equipment to help you do all this, don't you? So let me ask you, what kind of equipment do you need in practice? Give me some things that are necessary. Remember, I'm still preparing for practice. All this is preparation to get myself organized. So give me some ideas of things you need for practice. Basics. Okay, helmets number one, right? When do kids wear helmets? When? Give me, when? Come on. Hello? <laughs> okay, but give me an idea. Tell me what, you know, give me a situation. Huh? Okay, when they're hitting in a game, they wear a helmet. When else? When they're base running, they wear a helmet. When else? Huh? On deck, they're wearing a helmet. Where else? Come on. Huh? Dog out. Well, let's say we're running practice. Let's say, when they're catching, possibly, depending on the ages. We're running to practice. I've got four tees right there, batting tees. I've got four kids with batting tees. They're going to hit into a net. I've got four kids over there. There's a net or a screen, whatever you have at the field. It doesn't matter. And remember, if you don't have, if you can't hit real balls, you don't need real balls. You can get a softer ball hit it into the net. The group over there, guess what they're doing? They're just going to take the ball, toss it up. Don't step. Just toss it up. Try to hit it into the thing. It's hand-eye coordination. It's balance. It's all you're working on. They're going to miss, but the more you do it, it's repetition. And the more they do it, I take my dog. Beverly knows. I have, we have two dogs. I started throwing baseballs to my black dog, little one, right? At first, he started missing them. I do it every day. Now he's catching them like he's a pro. Did I teach him anything? I teach him a thing. What, what am I going to teach him? You know, open your mouth. <laughs> um, so what? What ha you want repetition? A lot of repetition. And if you don't know anything about hitting, and you got four hitting stations, all you want to do is start in your stance. Forget all the mechanics for right now, and take a swing, whatever they are, hit or miss, freeze at the end, balance yourself. That's all you're asking. Remember, we got an hour and a half practice. How much can you do an hour and a half? But if they can take five swings here and freeze, hit or miss the ball. Five swings there, hit or miss. Five swings there, and that coach with a wiffle ball over here, five swings, hit or miss. Freeze no matter what. Whether you hit it or don't, you freeze at the end. Why? Why? Why would we do that? Balance. Yeah, we're working on balance. Now, if I did that 25 times for six practices, I got a pretty good idea now. My body's starting to understand how to stay balanced because I'm freezing at the end. And instantly, instantly, guys, this works, right? Instantly they will start to hit the baseball better than you teaching them what to do. Okay, the body will adapt to try to balance itself. Okay, does that make sense? So there's my stations, there's my hitters. I don't have to worry about somebody throwing a baseball. You're not gonna hit till later, but now the helmet, the helmet. See, we only wear a helmet when we hit in a game. We have to get realistic, okay? What's the reality? If you're hitting on a tee, you better have a helmet on. And I know what you're gonna tell me, you're gonna tell me for safety. Well, that's common sense. That's, as a coach, my number one concern is safety. I shouldn't be telling you that, right? What's the real reason? Absolutely. Don't ever do anything in practice that you don't do in a game. If you wear a batting helmet in a game, you wear it every time you hit. I don't care if you're hitting up a tee, soft toss, whatever it is, wear a helmet because it's part of the swing. Does that make sense? Now, take the bat. I know it's not hitting, but it's going to help you with your practice. When I first start out, what kind of bat? If I had my own son or daughter in your backyard, what kind of bat should you start off with? And Mr. Chris is the best at this. What kind of bat? Huh? <coughs> the regular bat? Plastic bat. Absolutely. The, and I, the lightest bat possible. The lightest. With the biggest barrel possible. Right? If you can get that. If you can't, at least the lightest bat would allow them to swing. And once they swing and feel the swing, you know, do that 10, 15, 20, 40 times, after a while, then you could put the regular. See, the problem is we give them the hard ball. It's too big for their hands. Physiologically impossible for a 10-year-old to throw this consistently. You know, and then you got the coach saying, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Can't do it because the hand's too small. This ball's going to slip out of his hand sooner or later, right? So we got to go to a smaller baseball. Bat, same thing. 
And the Japanese were smart. I keep, I do a lot of training in Japan. The Japanese were smart. They went to a smaller baseball. Okay. So without getting into all the details, what else? What other equipment you need? Come on. Come on. Okay. I hope so. Right. You need a glove, right? But you don't necessarily need a glove right away, first day, do you? No, why? Because I could be rolling ground, and I'll show you the videos tomorrow. I could be rolling ground balls. I could be working on my backhand, forehand, dives. We make our 10-year-olds learn how to just dive. Dive. Start on two knees, roll the ball, and dive to your right. Start on two knees, dive to the left. Right? Roll the ball left. Let him work on his backhand. It doesn't matter if he doesn't do it right. He's starting to create the movement. Okay? It doesn't look good yet. But is he going to look good the first time? Absolutely not. Okay? So we don't even need a glove the first couple practices. What else do you need? Do you need batting tees for practice? Absolutely. Got some batting tees. How many of you guys have about four tees in practice? Anybody? Four, four tees? Raise your hand. Okay. How, we, you guys are hopeless, aren't you? <laughs> Wait, we're done. Let's just stop there. We're finished. Sorry, no. Um, yeah. I, that's why you're here. No, you're, you're here. You're good, but you're here to get better. We're all here to get better. I can, we can all learn. Okay, so we don't have tees. What do we do? Give up? All right, we got construction workers here. Yeah. Now, who works construction around here? Okay. What time do you off of work? What time do you get off of work? Like, <laughs> you guys, hey, these aren't tough questions. <laughs> the guy back there, he didn't want to tell me how many practices he has. Hey, these guys are tough. So, 3 o'clock, you ever seen these orange cones on the streets? Right? They make great batting tees. And guess what? They're free. <laughs> Just sit there. Right? Uh, they're free. I'm teasing. Um, no, I don't want you to go steal them. What I want you to do is be creative enough to figure out a way to get a tee. Okay, what I did was I took three golf tubes, you know, the plastic tubes in those bags. I got a can, and I put the tube in there, and I put some cement, instant cement. I got a grocery store, or whatever, it hardware store, and made my own batting tees. Look, if you're gonna have, if your job is to run a successful practice, then you've got to be organized, and you got the right equipment. What What else do kids like that you might that, that you might have already that they like to do a lot of? We got tennis ones. Okay, tennis balls, and they're free, right? Because you go to a tennis club, they throw them out once they're not good because all the, you know, the, the, the stuff goes in. Tennis balls are awesome. They're great for throwing up. You can take a tennis racket and work on pop-ups, right? That's part of some of our drills and our videos. Um, what else? Come on. Give me some. Football. Shoes. You guys aren't very bright, are you? <laughs> but what am I doing? Yeah, but, hey, there you go. Congratulations. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Now what we do is if that kid doesn't hustle, we take the card back. So he, he gains and he loses. Guys, these cards, if you can get them, they're like gold. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a rabbit, you know, with carrots. Come on. You know, you want you you, you say you can't control them, you can control them. <laughs> Guys, you can control them. Trust me. He's a troublemaker. Doesn't pay attention. You just go to the guy next to him. Don't even say anything to him. What's your name? Dave. Dave, you did a great job hustling today, man. Super. Keep up the great work. <laughs> you think he wants a card? You're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right. Yeah, yeah. He wants it. Okay, now, some of you guys might, hey, some of you guys might be loaded, right? You might be, pull out the, the, the dollars. Give him a buck. <laughs> Five bucks. Man, that stuff works. Hey, why not? You can use incentives to get kids to get going a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. We use baseball cards all the time, but we take them away also when they don't do well. Now, stopwatches. Here's the beauty of stopwatch. It doesn't even have to work. It doesn't have to work. Guys, I've been doing this 30 years. Here we go. Ready? Who wants to get timed on first base? Yeah! Boom! Right? Go! Tag the base. 4.1. Good job, Jimmy. Boom. Write it down. Right? Next time. Hey, Jimmy. Four point, maybe a week later, 4.0, much better. You know why? Because you're working on your skills. I understand it's a little bit of a fit, but you're dealing with what? The brain, right? It makes them feel good. When they feel good, they work harder, all right? Um, I've done it many times. In 30 years, I've never had a young man come up to me and go, Coach, can I see that time? <laughs> ever, ever. And guess how smart I am? As soon as, if it works, if I'm doing the real time, as soon as I get the time, I click it off just in case. Because then if it comes up and says, oh shoot, I, I already, I'm starting the next one. Never had it happen, because I'm not worried about that. Okay, now I can have games, you know, when I do that. I can have a team at second base, a team at first base, or at home plate, and then I say go, and I might put a cone at first base so they know where to turn, and I put a cone at second base so they know how to stay inside the cone and not end up in right field. Do the same thing at second base, third base, the cones will dictate. So what do I need now? I need some cones. 
Oh, I, I don't have money to buy combs. How about a milk carton with water in it? Oh, you didn't think about that, did you? Milk carton with water in it is the same thing as a comb. They walk around, they run around the milk carton. You guys have milk here in Canada? Because <laughs> you're looking at me like, you know, I'm, I'm another planet. Uh, you guys, you guys, yeah, that's, it's not just hockey players here? Um, okay, so what other equipment? Come on. We got the stopwatch, got the cones. Got, they got the bases. Maybe I, maybe I have bases I can move around. Do I need a baseball field? Absolutely <coughs> not. I can do all this in a regular field. It's raining. Figure something out then. If there's an under, is there a canopy? I can do little drills with can, underneath the canopy. I can do some stuff in the garage. I and mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can be creative, believe me, if you put your mind to it. Now, here's the part. I need you to open up your minds. When you see a young kid walking down the street and he sees a puddle, what does he do? He jumps in. Right. When, you, when an adult does that, what do they do? Uh, no, they bitch about it, and then they go, okay? they, don't, they, they, they complain about it. Right? We all do that. I'm a complainer, too. My wife's got to tell me all the time, you know, don't complain about this, don't complain about that. And, but yet, when I get on the field, I'm as motivated as I am here, okay? Because I know how important it is to those young men, because I was one of those guys. Weren't you? Didn't, weren't you looking forward to practice? So you, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Okay, now, have an open mind. Here's the open mind. Anybody bring a glove? Good. One coach, no coach is coming to bring the glove. What did the rest of you guys bring? Hockey sticks? <laughs> Where's your glove? You're out. <laughs> All right, so now, how important is this? How important is it? Pretty important? Okay. Breaking the glove. One ball here, one ball there. Close the glove, right? Wrap it. Leave it like that in the off season. How many guys do that? Raise your hand. Okay. Buy my videos. The guys that just raise your hand, it's mandatory. Okay, to pass this class, you gotta buy my videos. Worst thing you do it for a glove, right here. Did it for 20 years. Did it when I was younger. Why is it the worst thing? Because when you open it up, what kind of form do you have? You have that form. Okay? How about this? Yeah, see your glove is actually worth something now. Is this yours? Yeah, it's, it's worth something. Before it wasn't worth much. Before it was uh, is it was this a hand me down from great great grandfather? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's another problem, right? Great grandfather gives it to the dad. Grand dad gives it to the son. By the end, it's this big, right? It's broken on wrong. So now you turn your glove inside out. Now what happens when you open it back up? Stays open. Absolutely, stays open. Okay. So how we break a glove in is extremely important. But yet you see a lot of guys breaking in wrong. That's why I'm asking you to have an open mind on how you do this. So all your kids ought to learn right away. Turn your glove inside out. Open it up. Boom. We're ready to go. And it's weird, try it. You turn your glove inside out, they look at you like you're nuts. All right? And then they start thinking, man, that's a pretty good idea. All right, let me give you another one, open mind. Man gets on first base. What do you tell him? You're coaching first base. Guy gets hit, what do you tell him? Just got a base hit. Good job. <laughs> Great job, okay? What did I say, open up your mind. Right? That's a good answer, but everybody gives that answer, right? What, what's the other one? What else are you tell at first base? What are you telling? Come on, coach. Don't give me the 33 hour. You don't want to go with it. Yeah, I figured that out. I think I know. Just stop here. What do you, what do you, no, no, what, what, what do you tell them? What do you tell them? Come on. I know, you got the first. Hey, high five, great job, let's go. Now what? You got to tell them something. Why are you, why are you standing there? What? Come on, what are you going to tell them? Take a lead off, right? Take each lead off. What are you going to tell them? Come on, the number one thing that everybody does. They do it in Japan, Italy, Hawaii, I mean, Don't you name it. Tell them what? Don't get picked off. Yeah, that's a good positive thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure he gets picked off. No, don't tell them. Never use a negative term. Yeah, two away, right? Come here, get over here. Get over here. Come here. You said two away? Come here. Right? You, you tell them what? The? Oh, it's the no, 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 the what? You just told them two what? Two outs. Yeah, so you told them the what? Told the outs. Right? Right? And I'm taking a bath. <laughs> 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 Sit down. No, here's the problem. You don't tell them the outs. Shame on you. Shame on the million of coaches around the country that tell kids the outs. Son, Jimmy, two outs. Right? Why are we telling them the outs? Why are you telling them the outs? Why are you telling me? Why am I telling? For 20 years, I told them the outs. Now I started thinking, what am I doing? What's the number one complaint 
of young coaches or coaches in general. Kids don't know the outs, right? They complain, man, they don't know the outs all the time. I don't understand why they don't know the outs. They don't have to know the outs. You're telling them. Do you understand? See, you tell them all the time, two way. But they're not learning the game. They got you doing it for them. You know what my answer is? Joe, how many outs? Well, I don't know. Well, you dumbass, you ought to. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not what you say. But you go, Jimmy, how many outs? Guys, I've done this in practice games. I did this in a real game. Kid came to third base. I said, Freddie, how many outs? He said two. Okay? There was only one. You know what I said? I said, good luck. <laughs> That's all I said. I said, good luck. Walk back to third base. Right? Good luck. No problem. Why? I wanted him to learn a lesson. I didn't chew him out. It was one out only. So what happened on a ground ball? He did what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever the situation was, it was the wrong one, right? So he comes in, he says, I thought you said, no, no, I never said there were two outs. You said there were two outs. <laughs> you, you understand the game we're playing here now? You gotta know the outs, son. Okay, don't worry about it. Give me a high five, don't worry about it. You just learned a valuable lesson. See, that's the problem, we tell them the outs. All right, I'm on first base. Boom, boss hit the left field. I'm running to second base. Keep your open mind, right? The open mind, I said, the puddle and all that. I'm running to first base, or second base, and I gotta go to third. Who makes that choice? I'm 10 years old. Remember, I'm not a college guy, I'm not a high school guy. And as a matter of fact, in high school, I believe you have to do this. What do you do? Who makes the decision to go to third? Kids. Absolutely, the kid makes the choice. 99% of the time, who makes that choice? Third base coach, why? He doesn't wanna lose. <laughs> You're not in a game of winning or losing. You're in a game of educating young men, and, and Lunch talks about this better than anybody, and getting them to learn the game, right? So he gets thrown out three times at third base. I guarantee you the fourth time, he's gonna be safe. The fifth time, he's gonna be safe. The sixth time, there's a cardinal rule in baseball, never make the first or third out at, at first or third out at third base. Ask Joe Mann with the, with the, with the uh, Rays. Um, ask a bunch of coaches I teach with, baloney. That was Joe Mann's comment on, on video. He said, baloney. I want to be aggressive. I don't want to take away aggressiveness. 140 times the, the Tampa Bay guy <coughs> at the big league level went to third base when a player in the outfield, if the ball, if he takes one step to his right or one step to his left to get the ball, they train their guys to go to third base on that. Do you know how many times they got thrown out out of 140 times? How many times do you think they got thrown out? Probably a couple, 10. Two. Two. I've got a guy in an independent ball. 90 times they did it. They tracked this. He got thrown out four times because he's teaching being aggressive. But we went to, old, to the school of, that we used to always teach all the time. Don't do that. Well, you know what? We opened up our minds a little bit and said, why? Why can't you do that? Man walked the winning, or excuse me, bases loaded. He walked the left-handed hitter with Texas, Hamilton. Hamilton, right? Sometimes I lose names. He walked them with the bases loaded to score a run because he didn't want him to get a base hit to score two or a home run for four, and he got the next guy out. Would you ever do that? I mean, would you see anybody doing it? No, why? Because we, we're closed as coaches. We want to only, we only teach, how do we teach? We teach what we've been taught, and we teach how we did it. Problem is, both could be wrong. That's all I'm asking, telling you. It could be wrong how you were taught, and it could be wrong how you did it. If I taught young kids to throw like I threw, I damaged their arms. All right, now, you gotta set up your practice plan. What's the first thing you do in practice? Warm-ups, right? Okay, so do we have to do do we have to do toe touches? No. Okay, do we have to do this? No. Is this fun? If it is, we can all do it now. Right? Stand up, right? Okay, let's let's touch our toes. Right? Or let's stretch right. Let's stretch left. Right? Oh, that's fun. That's not fun. You know, get them to do some short jogs forward, backwards, sideways, no? Karaoke's, is that gonna loosen them up? Sure, better than static stretching. Okay, and I'll show you some videos on that. We don't need to get into all the stretching, but, but my point is, and if you're not really sure, if you don't wanna do that, how about this? Put them in a circle and go, ready position. Matter of fact, stand up, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on, stand up. Okay, show me your ready position when the pitcher's gonna start his lineup. Show it to me, ready? <coughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> That's your ready position? Come on now, ready, go. Okay, some of you guys are real low, like you're in your fielding position. What's your ready position? It's the position you're in that you can move right, left, back, forward, sideways, without going up or down. You gotta move up or down in your first move to run, to go get the ball, 
then you're too low or you're too high. Does that make sense? Okay, so my ready position is not down low because then I gotta come up and run to go get the baseball. I'm gonna waste time. So ready position, ready to go. Look, athletic. Now toes straight, right foot a little bit behind you. If you're right-handed, lefty behind you, almost heel the toe, okay? That's your ready position. Now, go to your fielding position. Ready, go. Holy shit. It's looking ugly. Really? Coach, I'm waiting to get, I'm not sure we're going to win a game. I think we're, no, I'm just teasing. Okay, now, ready position. Take your, take your feet in your ready position, spread them up wider. Same thing, just wider. Okay, right, your toe is still, your right foot is still behind you a little bit. Take your elbows, put them on your knees. Yeah, put them there. I got two hip replacements. I can't go down like you can. Okay, on your knees, good. Does that feel good? Oh, yeah, it feels great, doesn't it? Don't you love that position? Tough position to get it, isn't it? Now, hold on, go back down, knees. Now, slide your hands out. Put your glove on the ground. Go ahead, put your glove on the ground. Keep your head up so you can see the ball. It's going to hit your head. Stay there. Come on now. Oh, that feels good. Now, let's do that one time. Relax. Now, is that fun? No, but we got to figure out how to do it. And you can't sit there with 10, 10 year olds and do that. Because they're going to Tomorrow, you're going to have one guy come to practice. Okay, if you do that. But, you watch. Ready? Here we go. Ready position. Feeling position. Go down. Good. Hitting position. All you got to do is come right back up. Same position. Feet wide. Right foot slightly behind. Put your shoulders, put your bat on your shoulders. Just put your bat on your shoulders, let your elbows relax down. Right there. Now just lift your hands up a little bit. That's your hitting position. That's straight. Ready? Right hitting position. Now, when I say go to contact, rotate your belly button forward, turn your right foot slightly, right? And lock your front leg. We should do our best here. When your hands are out in front of your belly button, one pound should be up, one pound down. Okay? Not roll. Look at the pounds. One up, ah, ah, one up, one up. And one down. Right. See mine? Flat? There you go. So one is up, one is down. I'll get you afterwards. Uh, if you know that, just buy my DVDs. Um, so here we are. Now ready to finish. All right, good. Now contact. Back to contact. Back to stance. Good job. Now swing. Freeze. Good job. Go back to stance. Ready? Swing. Freeze. Freeze. Come on. Stance. And now go all the way around. All the way around with your hands. Go all the way around. Freeze. Boy, there's something cracked there. Good. We got insurance? I don't think so. Okay, freeze. There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, some of you guys are falling. Come on, keep your balance. Ready, stands. Ready, swing. Freeze! Good. See, now I just got, I, I'm stretching. Now, you tell me, are you stretching doing that? I heard you crack. I can hear bones crack. Tell me, tell me that's not more stretchy. Okay, well, we know we're not done. Get up. Get up. Get up. What? So, are you hurt? You're a young guy, man. Ready? Here we go. No, this goes quick. Once you do it the first time, next practice goes fast. So here we go. Ready? Ready? Position. Good. Fielding position. Hitting position. Swing. Freeze. Contact position. Contact point. Right there. There you go. Stance. Good job. Throwing position. Raise one hand up. Both elbows up. Okay, don't worry about it. We can't get perfect here. One elbow up. This elbow front up will bend a little bit, not straight. Right? And this one up here bend a little bit. Now right from there, just rotate like you're hitting and throw. Good. Rotate and throw. Good. Good job. Hitting position. Throwing position. Now look where I went from. I went from a hitting position right to my throwing position. Did I do anything else? No, don't make it complicated. Ready? Hitting position. Swing. Freeze. Feeling position. Go. Feeling position. Throwing position. Good job. Not bad. You like monkeys. Right? <laughs> Good job. See, now, did I train you real fast? Just like that. What did I do? Now, we're not even done. Yes. Now, what does that mean? Uh, I forgot. About 10? Perfect. What am I doing in a short period of time as my warm-up? We're going through our skills. Now, I might go fielding position. Go ahead, fielding position. Now, be careful here because you got chairs. Now, when you throw, you want to go forward, right? You don't want to go sideways. We don't want to go backwards. We don't want to go that way. We want to go forward. So slowly, start to go forward and turn your body sideways completely. Sideways, completely, completely. Now, raise your elbows. Now, throw the ball. There you go. Got it? So, ready position, feeling position, hitting position, swing, freeze, throwing position, throw, fielding position, fielding position, fielding position, not ready, fielding position, throwing position, go forward, go forward, there you go, just go forward and turn, throw, hitting position, swing, freeze, sit down. That's it, good job. You're still in the Good job. Okay. Hey, not, not only are you buying the DVDs, okay, <laughs> after this, but on top of it, I get a tip, because that's an exercise class, okay? <laughs> I just got you in better shape. Some of you guys need it. Right? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Take care of your health, huh? It's important. Don't, you know, I watch my weight all the time. Take care of it, because 
You know, your kids, you need to be around for your kids. Remember, it's not safe to eat bad and all that. You're trying to be an example for your kids also. All right, so what did I just do? I just warmed up, didn't I? I could do that for three minutes and get a lot more than running around. No, I gotta get my car because I'm picking up, man. Might even get a DVD set. <laughs> okay? So, does that make sense? So I just did that as my warm up. Then what's the next thing I'm gonna do after warm up? And by the way, when they come to the field, bats in one area, first day. Lunch said it perfectly, I think, last night. Uh, and maybe it wasn't lunch last night, I can't remember. But players want discipline at all levels. Like, let, right? Your kids want discipline, don't they? They want to be disciplined, but if you let them go, they'll take advantage of it. And what you need to do is you need discipline, but you need discipline in a nice, fun way right away. Okay, so here we go. Put your bats right here. Why? So you know where they're at, right? Take your gloves right there. Do what the big leaguers do. Take your hat off. Tell them that. Do what the big leaguers do. Take their hat off. Put it in their hat. Put it on the bench. Now I know where my hat. You ever have a young kid come up and where's my hat? Yeah, oh yeah. What do I look like? You know, your dad and mom? No, I don't know where your hat's at. Um, tell your parents. Educate your parents. Tell them, listen, don't carry your bags to practice. Okay? Let them carry your bag to practice. It's seriously. And now I, I, I get a lot of complaints. Well, parents, you know, they're tough, man. They don't, you know, they, they, they don't listen or they complain all the time. You know why they complain all the time? Because you keep them away. You don't educate them. See, I believe in this. When I have a team meeting, we always have parents involved. I know I'm a little different. Okay? I know there are a lot of guys in the States disagree with me. But I've had, I've had this discussion with high school coaches, friends of mine. I always involve the parents. Why? They think they know it all, don't they? That's what you want. Because what you want to do is educate yourself to the point where you know more than they do. And now when you're talking to the kids, who are you really talking to? Absolutely. You're talking to the kid, parents through the kids. They're right there. But you're talking to the kids. And the parents, believe me, sooner or later, the parents are going to go, man, you know what? I didn't know that. I guarantee you, you tell the kids to practice, turn your glove inside and out. There's not a parent in the world that knows that you're supposed to turn your glove inside out. That simple. To get a better feel. Now, does that give you credibility? Absolutely. Because you're explaining to the kids why you do that. And you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. so include the parents. Have that first parent meeting and go over the rules. Here's number one rule. I've got 12 kids, three coaches, six practices. Be honest with me, parents. Tell them this. I can't help them as much as I want. I need your help. So how can you get the parents involved? Show them that when you throw a baseball, number one thing, is the number one skill throwing? Would everybody agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Number two skill to teach would be what? Catching. Catching. So they're together. Let's put catching and throwing together. What's the number uh, two skill after that? I got you, Chris. Hitting, right? right? Throwing, why is throwing so important for kids to do? Because you do it in a game all the time, right? And it's dangerous. If you teach them to do it wrong, they're going to get hurt. So now, you put the onus on the parents and the player. All you explain to the parents are, play catch with them five minutes a day, every day, and they're going to get better at what they're doing. And all you as a parent need to do is know that before <coughs> they control the baseball, they need to turn completely sideways. If that's all they know, is that a major task for a lot of kids? Absolutely. If you can get a 10-year-old just to turn, you made a big, big step. Because by turning, I put myself in a better position to launch the baseball in that direction, using my whole body and not my elbow and shoulder. Does that make sense to you? So now, if you can educate the parent in that simple thing, imagine now if he does that five minutes a day, every day. He's gonna be a better thrower. You've got to let them know that you can't do that. You're not there every day. You're there twice a week, three weeks. That's it. If, a parent, if the kid wants to get better, he's going to swing the bat in the backyard a little bit on his own. Maybe 10. Don't tell him. You know, I love it. They go, you know, tell a 10-year-old, hey, you got to do 100 swings. Are you kidding me? You feel like he can do 10. Okay? I'd rather have he does 10 every day than 100 one day, and then he relaxes the rest of the time because he just, he just, it's boring. Hmm. Let him do 10, day, 10 a day. Okay? Challenge him a little bit, doing their own thing. All right, lastly, I'm going to leave you because we're running out of time. Um, I, I want to hit on this, umpires. Shame on you. Shame on you if you're arguing umpires at this age. Now, especially if they're kids. But I don't care who they are. I want bad calls. Did you, did you just see what I said? You sure? I want bad calls. Isn't that wild? Most coaches don't want bad calls because they want to win. I want bad calls. Why do I want bad calls? 
Exactly, and it teaches them how to deal with it at a younger age. Because by the time they get 15 or 18, mentally they can't deal with that mistake. That I piss up here, you know, and he's complaining to the umpire. No, not allowed. I don't think coaches ought to be doing that. I had a lady one time at a game, and I'll finish with this. She, uh, she was mad at the umpire in Illinois, I think it was. And she was mad at the umpire, you know, and like, she's all over him the whole time. And she said to the umpire, you know, you know what, Blue? And she yelled this. If I was married to you, I'd serve you poison. Oh, oh, oh. I'm standing right next to the lady. But the umpire's pretty sharp. He turned around and said, if I was married to you, I'd probably eat it. <laughs> None of that, please. Okay? It, it's a bad example. Okay? Um, let the manager of a big league team, a collegiate team, let them do that because they're in the game of also winning. So it's a mental game between the umpire and the coach. At our level, encourage them. It's okay. Look, you can tell them you thought it was a bad call. Just walk up to him. John, is he walking by? Hey, John, I just thought it was a bad call. That's all right. Just go. That's fine. It's not a big deal. You know, I didn't agree with the call. That's all. But to go up to him and yell and scream at him, make a big scene for everybody because you're pretty cool, you know, and you want to be tough, that doesn't, that doesn't show anything. All it does is show the kids that that's okay. Um, I, guys, I, I've been mad at umpires, but when I got young kids, I don't worry about it. When they come back in the dugout, you know what I tell them? I said, uh, where was that pitch? Well, it was over my head. Okay, if you thought it was over your head, then that's fine. You can live with that. It was a bad call. Umpires make bad calls. But if you thought it was pretty close and you should have swung at it, then you got to live with it too. And next time, maybe you'll go after that pitch. Okay, so you deal with it. Talk to the kids about that stuff. Hey, the worst thing to do is do this, and I'm done. Don't swing at this. No shit. <laughs> um, don't swing at this. I know that. He knows that. The problem is the ball's coming at 70 miles an hour and you got four, two tenths of a second to make a decision. And sometimes, guess what? I can't stop. All right? So, okay, you swing at a high pitch. It happens. All right? Chris, I'm done, right? It's up to you. Well, it's up to you guys. I'm, I, we're done. You know. Yes, finish. Finish? Thank you. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'll have the video running tomorrow. We'll show you drills and all that. If, again, if you're interested, in, and I promote the DVDs because that's my business. Okay? I don't want to sound, you know, like I'm doing it too much, but I have to. It's my business. I believe in them. They're 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 very good. Um, and like I said, if you don't like them, I'll send them right back to you. Matter of fact, you buy my ticket, I'll bring them back to you. <laughs> and God bless you for what you do. We need volunteers. We need good volunteers in the game because the numbers in baseball are going down, especially in the U.S. at the younger ages. And where is it attributed to? Bad coaching. No doubt about it. Okay? Ask, number, ask most kids why they quit baseball. They didn't have fun either.